there's an exercise where, oh, we can say this, rock star energy drink. Those who wanna um, do the exercise, we're gonna say rock star to ourselves without opening our mouths, without saying anything outside. We're gonna say this to ourselves. We're gonna say rock star to ourselves. Don't say it out loud at the count of three. One, two, three. Okay. Now the question to ask, if you've said rock star in, in your mind, the question to ask is, what voice is that? What voice is that? What, what voice just spoke? You just said rock star without moving your mouth at all. On top of that, you, you, on top of saying rock star, you heard yourself say rock star. Uh, how can you hear yourself say rock star and no vibration of sound has happened? See, this puts a different perspective on what sound actually is. And, and what memory is. Memory's not in the brain, memory's in the soul. The only thing you take with you after this life is your memories or your knowledge, your experiences. That's the only thing you take. Unless you study Egypt uh, uh, culture, they believe you can take all their stuff with you on the other side. <laughs> Just as a, a side note. But if you said rock star in your mind or in your being is the true answer, is the true statement. In your being, what was that voice? What was the voice that spoke and then you heard yourself speaking? But these ears did not hear you say anything because your mouth didn't move. So the ears didn't hear it, the mouth did not move, but you spoke and you heard yourself speaking. If you close your eyes, you can see this better. If you close your eyes and put this image in another site, if you close your eyes, you can still see this. What is the sight that can see your future? These two eyes don't see the future. These two eyes don't see the past. Yet, you can see your past and you can see your future. You can actually see your past. <laughs> what is the sight that can see beyond time? Hmm. Don't give it away. <laughs> what is this is this is an ancient meditation. This is an ancient meditation that I am not the flesh. I am the energy, the consciousness, the being in the flesh. And this is proof. This is no faith. This is not religion. This is actual fact. You can speak without moving your mouth. You can hear without ears. You can see without eyes. So what happens when these eyes, this mouth, and this ear drops off into the grave? These other senses are all you're left with. Death is an illusion. Once you realize this, you live your life more courageously. Now, no one wants to die before their time, so you try to protect yourself. But know that this body is the limitation of you. It is not your zenith. It is not your ultimate. Your ultimate is that voice that just said rock star. <laughs> that voice that just said rock star without nothing physical moving, that person is immortal. That person is not here with you. Let's go deeper. The body is in, what is it? Three dimensions, right? Forward, back, right, left, up, down, and time. Fourth dimension, three dimensions plus time. That's our physical reality. Front, back, right, left, up, down, that's 3D plus time. 
What happened to in and out Look at the East, look at the, the English thought. Back, forth, right, left, up, down, no in and out. No in and out. What is in and out? Rock star. <laughs> Rock star says, I exist without the body. So where is this other existence? Where is it? It's not here, it's not in three dimensional space where you really are. The person that said this is in a whole different dimension. Just switch a little bit. Talk to yourself more. <laughs> Affirm to yourself more. Don't move none of this, mm -hmm. close this down and go within and say, I am the greatest dot, dot, dot ever. I have all my needs coming with speed. I am a being of love and light and knowledge. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Whatever it is, have your affirmation on your tongue, or sorry, in your being. This is how the gods created this whole reality. The first humans, imagine, the first humans, they came from inner space. They came out, study the Anunnaki's. They came out of inner space. Not from up, outer space, inner space, rock star. <laughs> Before there was a body, there was this voice traveling in this voice's dimension to get here to the earth. The inner voice created this outer extension of itself to be in this dimension. Once you realize that you are not just in this dimension, but you're also in another dimension, you now are free. Because whatever happens to you here in this dimension is not your only reality. See, this is how Jesus was able to get beaten and, and brutalized and hang on the cross. He wasn't here. He was the rock star. Inside he went to the inner man. Do what you want with the body, I'm not here. Now once you realize that level of consciousness, where you are officially, you identify yourself as the spirit, not the flesh. You are the inner voice, not the outer voice. Once you become the inner voice, now your outer voice has power. Now when you speak, it's not just a shell speaking. There's a being speaking through the shell. And this is where you heal all sickness in your body. This is where you command reality to work with you and it works according to your consciousness. Why? Because it's not a shell that's speaking. There's a real being in the shell that is speaking. And when the real being speaks, all nature and the universe respond. This is how hip hop was created. We spoke it into existence. That's why MC it. This is why MC it is so important to hip hop. We spoke our reality into existence. The word MC in E M C E E I N did not exist. The correct term is master of ceremonies. We called ourselves MCs for master of ceremonies, M.C. Rakim came along and said, it's the E-M-C-E-E, -E -E, a repetition of words, check out my melody, we all switch. Now it became E-M-C-E-E, -E -E. we made that up. DJ, D-E-E-J-A-Y-I-N, we made that up. Breaking, we made that up. Graffiti art, we didn't make up graffiti. The act of writing on the side of the train. Graffiti's an Italian term, means scratch, or to scratch. We called ourselves writers, taggers, bombers. America called us graffiti artists, bombers. But 
With each of these words, we created a new reality. This is how we're surviving. What is hip hop? It's like saying Gaba God. <laughs> what is Gaba God? I don't know, but let's create it. This is how you can defeat the cops on another level. You know, if you had a, a, a if, if if you had a, a, a weapon that can dismantle firearms, there'd be no more police brutality. Because the, the only thing they got is the gun. Let's say even Macy could get that, you could deal with that. But a gun, somebody firing on you. If you had something called a GB, I mean, what's a GB? A GB is a little thing you turn on and it dismantles guns. Now go make it. <laughs> this is what you tell children. Because they will make it. They will come up with a thing called, this is a GB. What does it do? It dismantles guns. Look, clear, 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 whole police department. This is, this is how, this is the reverse of the use of words or, or your original tongue, as they say. The original word. You didn't wait for something to come. You, you said it first, then created it. It's not created, then you say it. <laughs> I'm giving you a mic. What is it, microphone? No. Let's first say gabba dabba. What is gabba dabba? Oh, it's a, it's a suit that I put on. And when I put this suit on, I can go into another dimension. I disappear from here. <laughs> Word? A gaba, yeah, it's called a gaba giba. Yeah, gaba giba, that's what it's called. Now go make it. Our children should be trained like this. There's a machine that you, there's a carpet that flies across the sky with no, no gasoline, nothing. It uses the sun and it flies across the sky. You're five years old. It's called a juju. Now go make it. <laughs> Little kids running around. Yo, we could do this, yo. <laughs> and you want to hear something about invention. When you give little kids an impossible or seemingly impossible task, they create other stuff along the way. They discover themselves along the way trying to get to the impossible task. This is again the purpose for God. The purpose for an infinite being in your mind is so that you never get tired of yourself. <laughs> that there's always something for you to reach for, always something for you to go, something always exciting. God is always one step ahead. But no, not if you're a scientist. <laughs> if you're a scientist, the universe is dead. It is a thing, it's not organic. It is something that its laws, once understood, can be controlled. And what's so interesting is this new science, or not new now, but this new talk on quantum mechanics or quantum physics. I'm gonna end now, I'm going off. Um, but I'll say this about quantum mechanics, quantum physics, is that it's said, said in, in the quantum theory that if you look at an atom, it's fixed in one position. But if you turn your back on an atom, it's in superposition. Meaning that atom, the, the world of atoms, uh, the atomic structure of, of material reality, atoms are outside of space. Certain atoms can be in China and in America, and if you affect one, the, the minute you hit one, another one, the, the, the same thing you did to this one will happen to this one. They call it being co-located. This idea of atoms not being in fixed positions in space, meaning that if I'm not looking at an atom, it's everywhere, it's in superposition. It could be anything and be anywhere until I look at it. Once I look at it, the observer collapses the atomic structure and it becomes whatever my perception tells the atom to be. This is called sight. Everyone knows that sight is not out there. Sight is in here. Sight happens in the brain, which really happens in the mind. And so the reason I bring this to the reason I bring this up is because 
Quantum mechanics says that the observer is creating the reality that the observer observes. So scientists are saying the brain creates reality. That there's no reality out here. Reality is in here. This is what science says, reality is in here. So if reality is in here and you're a racist, what kind of reality are you going to project? And project to yourself only. Look how fast God is. Way faster than scientists. God says, I'll play with you guys for a little longer. Y'all trying to figure out the universe through mathematics and all of that. Okay, here's how I'm going to do y'all. I'm going to show y'all quantum mechanics. Basically, I'm going to show you a mirror. They don't realize that the universe is alive. How can there be life in the universe and the universe itself not be? How can a dead thing create a life then? The universe is alive and it thinks. We are it. We're it. Right, right now the universe is talking to itself having a conversation with itself right now for whatever purpose it wants to fulfill. So science is trying to use Galileo's equations. Mathematics is the, is the language of the universe. That's wrong. Galileo's wrong on that. What, was what is the real language of the universe is intention. This is what the universe is really looking at, intention. And we got that now through genetic sciences. I'm giving you these titles so when you leave, do the study, do the follow-up research. Genetics, the genome. People are realizing now that your environment is way more important than even your culture. That, you're, that the environment you're in, your genes are responding to the environments that you're in. Imagine that. That everything you do as a human, there's a tiny, 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 tiny little organism running around that does the exact same thing. Let me say it, let me put, let me put it to you this way so you can really see it. You are only a collection of cells. You should really spell it as C-E-L-F. Cell. Because what the self is, is the consciousness of cells. Cells reproduce, <laughs> they talk, they have waste, they have a job and a function, every cell knows what it's supposed to do. These are little thinking beings, and when they unite, they make you. The way you think is what they are thinking. When you say, I'm hungry, it's not you that's hungry, it's your cells that are hungry. You are the slave of your higher self, C-E-L-F. You are the servant of your higher self until you become your higher self, then you're free. This is why they say you are born a slave. You are, you're a slave to yourself. You're a slave to the addictions that your cells want. You're a slave to the made up realities of your language. You're a slave to your fears and this kind of thing. Once you realize that I am the eternal immortal being that speaks without this body, has existence without time and space. Once you really know that, you start moving like that. And then reality starts playing with you. You start reading things right in the nick of time, some message come to you right off the wall, nobody else see it. You're the only one to see it. Why? Because your perception is such. This is how you get over, this is how you get past, this is how you compete. Never compete is how you compete. The ancient way. This is the ancient, ancient way. You don't compete. That's, that's the English way. The way of nature is cooperation. Everything works in cooperation. 